For 12 years, this boy lived in the woods in complete isolation. All alone, his nervous system adapted to survive in this environment. He could see in the dark, had developed a strong sense of smell, and his hearing was tuned to natural sounds like fruit falling off trees or predators lurking in bushes. He had developed no temperature or pain responses, being able to place his hands directly into open flames. This boy was completely unique, one in several billion, raised without many of the crucial ingredients necessary for proper human development. Was this boy, after so long in isolation, capable of being around other people, learning language, joining society, and having a regular life? Welcome to the Wild Child of Avaron. Victor was found in 1799 in the forest of Avaron, France, estimated to be age 12, with no understanding of how he got there or how he had survived up to this point. He was completely naked, with scars and bruising covering his body head to toe. He walked on all fours, couldn't speak, and was completely indifferent to human company. He seemed incapable of any empathy or socialization. Victor preferred cold temperatures, disliked wearing clothes, and was initially unable to digest any cooked foods. There are even reports that he hadn't developed a sneeze response. In total, Victor was rescued over eight times by nearby villages, but each time he escaped back into the isolation of his natural sanctuary. He was eventually taken to the National Institute for the Deaf in Paris by none other than Lucien Bonaparte, Napoleon's brother. Although it was clear he wasn't actually deaf, he was simply indifferent to humans. This was a period of enlightenment in France, where dogmatic religious ideas were being questioned and often dethroned by science and philosophy. The nature of man was a topic of great discussion, and Victor was the perfect research candidate to get some answers. Initially, he was studied by the renowned Roch Ambrose Cucaron Sichard. Victor was exposed to society and education, although without much improvements, Sicard quickly got frustrated and abandoned him to walk the halls of the institute, once again alone, this time out of his natural habitat. All help for socialising Victor seemed to be a lost cause. This was until Jean-Marc Itard, the man who gave Victor his name, embarked on a mission that would redefine the boundaries between the feral and the civilized. Believing that empathy and language distinguished humans from animals, Itard set out to waken these inherently human traits in Victor. His strategy was a tailored educational regimen aimed at nurturing Victor's cognitive, sensory, and emotional development thereby facilitating his integration into society. But a large unknown still remained. Was Victor simply too broken from 12 years in social isolation to ever rejoin society? Itard leveraged the power of touch, exposing Victor to an array of textures and temperatures, from varied bathing temperatures to the feel of different fabrics. This tactile stimulation was designed to awaken Victor's dormant senses. Understanding Victor's acute natural hearing, Itard crafted exercises to refine his auditory skills towards society. By associating specific sounds with objects or actions, Itard laid the groundwork for communication, setting the stage for more advanced language acquisition. To build vocabulary, Itard used picture cards, showing an object and then a corresponding picture to Victor, attempting to piece together the puzzle of language one word at a time. Itard emphasized the labeling of everyday objects and repeated these labels consistently, aiming to embed these terms in Victor's understanding. Itard employed a basic reward system to reinforce positive behaviors or correct learning milestones. This could involve simple rewards like food treats or expressions of affection for successful completion of tasks or correct responses. Establishing a routine was crucial in Itard's method, providing Victor with a sense of security and predictability. Daily routines included structured times for meals, education and play, which is a principle that is still echoed in modern therapeutic and educational settings for individuals with developmental challenges to this day. These techniques, while obvious in the current area, were actually groundbreaking for the time. Victor showed significant early progress in responding to some language and reading simple words, but failed to progress beyond a rudimentary level. Itard wrote, His ear was not an organ for the appreciation of sounds, their articulations, and their combinations. 
It was nothing but a simple means of self-preservation which warned of the approach of a dangerous animal or the fall of wild fruit. Our brains are shaped by our surroundings, a fact that's still underappreciated to this day. This adaptability, which is seen as evolution's gift, allows our neural circuits to mold themselves to their environments. This process of sculpting goes far beyond simple learning. It's about forming the very pathways that define who we are based on the sensory data that we absorb. Victor's story is a stark reminder of this. Living in isolation, his brain adapted to a completely different set of stimuli, fundamentally altering his neural architecture in ways that diverge significantly from anyone that we know. Despite sharing the same basic neurotransmitter systems of dopamine, serotonin and epinephrine, his responses and adaptations mirrored those much more of a wild animal than an actual human. This extraordinary case underlies the profound impact of our early environment on our brain's development and functioning. This was seen during a period where Victor was making the most progress. Seemingly at random, he just decided to run away again. Something deep in Victor's neural wiring was pulling him back to the isolated forest in which he fought for survival during his young years. The only two phrases Victor ever actually learned to spell out were lay, milk, and oju, meaning oh god, and never truly even understanding the meaning for these words as he would frequently misuse them. Being deprived of the essential brain nourishment of language in his critical early years likely means that Victor almost completely lacks the ability to process and understand language. Victor's journey from complete socialization to a semblance of social integration highlights remarkable strides in emotional and sensory development. Over a few years, he not only cultivated empathy and sociability, but also began to engage meaningfully with those around him. His learning to interpret and respond to human actions marked a significant departure from his initial state. Intriguingly, his emotional milestones such as crying, sneezing, behaviours indicative of deeper human connection emerged after he developed a sensitivity to heat. This pivotal moment of feeling loved sparked by the simple warmth of a hug signified his first tears, underscoring a profound breakthrough in his capacity for emotional expression. This evolution in Victor's behaviour reflects not just adaptation, but a blossoming of inherent human traits that have laid dormant, unlocked by patient nurturing care. In one story, Victor was able to console the housekeeper Madame Guarin over the death of her husband, someone he had grown quite close to over the course of his education. While Victor showed significant growth in sensory skills and emotional responsiveness, his language development encountered a seemingly insurmountable barrier. This divergence in progress underscores the concept of differential neuroplasticity, the brain's uneven capacity for adaptation across different domains. Sensory and motor areas of the brain maintain a high capacity for change throughout life, enabling Victor to adapt and improve in these narrow domains. However, language acquisition is different, and it's tightly bound to a critical period in early childhood, a window of heightened sensitivity where the brain requires essential linguistic input to properly wire the language processing centers of the brain. Unfortunately for Victor, his initial years devoid of language exposure meant that this critical window had probably passed, significantly limiting his ability to learn language as Itard had hoped. This case strikingly illustrates how the timing of experiences can shape and sometimes limit the pathways of human development. After dedicating six years and countless hours to Victor's education, Jean-Marc Gaspard Itard reached a point where further progress seemed unattainable, and he reluctantly ceased his efforts with Victor, who lived a quiet life until the age of 40, eventually passing away from pneumonia. With many aspects of his condition and potential remaining a huge mystery to this day, Contemporary psychologists speculate that Victor might have been on the autistic spectrum, or even experienced an extreme form of psychosis, which could explain both his initial abandonment and the unique challenges that he faced in learning and social integration. Yet, the legacy of Victor, the wild child of Avron, extends far beyond his personal story. Prior to Victor, individuals deemed mentally incapacitated were often written off as incapable of learning or contributing to society, leading to their confinement in truly inhumane conditions or just complete abandonment. 
Victor's journey, despite its challenges, played a pivotal role in transforming how society views and approaches education and support for individuals with disabilities. The methodologies developed and applied by ITARD have informed practices that are now fundamental in special education. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe for more neuroscience stories and I'll see you next time.